On today's show, we break down the Leafs' shootout loss in Boston. And does Toronto need to make a move on defense with injuries piling up on the blue line? So we're getting into all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leaves podcast, a daily Maple Leaf Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Uh, the Maple Leafs falling 3-2 to two in a shootout to the big, bad Boston Bruins. Dave, what'd you make of that game? Um, if you're trying to compare it to the last game, an improvement? Yes, certainly an improvement. An I improvement, but definitely a roller coaster game. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably a good way to put it. Like I tweeted this out and it, it's, it's pretty frustrating watching this Leafs team because, you know, you watch, they come out slow and then they kind of have a, a wave and then they allow a goal and then it takes away some momentum. And then all of a sudden they're dominating games for like five minutes and they score a couple of quick goals. This time I have to do it in the second period. It's been a lot of times where they've waited till like the third period to have that five minutes of domination. But then they go back to playing, you know, kind of, you know, even Stephen hockey at that point. It's like, why? Like, it's as if they legitimately just have amnesia and they forget how good they are. And then once they get one goal, they're like, oh, that's right. We're a really good team. We can really take it to them if we play our best. And then they scored two goals within a minute three and then forced a, a penalty, got a power play, almost scored to make it three to two. And then like, you know, a couple minutes after that, it, it, it faded again and then weren't able to to find that third and final goal that they obviously needed to uh, to pull away with the full two points. But sometimes it can be frustrating watching this team. What, what you're trying to what you're saying here, Mike, is that on paper, this is a good team, but they need to have put effort in in order to actually be a good team. Like we what we saw right tonight from. I, if you're going to learn a lesson from the Bruins, it's how much effort really does come into play in these sort of games. And like, I mean, I don't know about you, that last five minutes of the game, it's probably some of the toughest <laughs> five minutes to watch. Like it was almost yeah. like, you know, you have a lead in the playoff. Like, it was like the Leafs were defending a lead when they didn't have a lead. They were tied. <laughs> like they were defending just, oh, we just got to get a point. We'll just try to get a point at this rate. Which is so bizarre because you look at Boston and they had no Charlie McAvoy. They had no Derek Forbert. They had no Matt Grizzly. Like that is a pretty weekend blue line. They should be on the offensive. The Leafs should have been on the attack all night long looking, you know, to go up against Ian Mitchell and get in the face of Mason Larai. Like they were, they weren't doing that, but they should have been all get like, I understand there's still a couple of good players out there. Like Hampus Lindholm is still a tremendous defenseman and, you know, kudos to him being able to, to, to do that. But like, there was enough chances out there where Toronto could have took it to the, you know, second, third pair blue liners who are barely NHLers at this point and just didn't really do it. They were very passive throughout the entire game. Yeah. It, those are the sort of things that really just irk you, right? Just how passive they can really be. And you know, it's it's a it's a mindset in a way, right? That that's what it comes down to in a lot of ways, because the talent's there, but the mindset is not always there. So, um, like that too, like you saw just how easy those two goals went in for the yeah. Leafs, right? Matthews untouched in the slot, right? No, no one's more dangerous if he's got the right than Austin Matthews when he's open like that. But the one for me was Marner. And what, what I was seeing from Mitch Marner tonight was him be more assertive offensively. And I said this in the last podcast, when he's assertive offensively, he is really tough to go up against. When he's shooting pucks, when he's putting chances on that, other teams are like, oh, yes, right. This guy's actually not terrible at hockey. 
Yeah. Wow, that's a little harsh. I mean, <laughs> I, I, well, if you read the comments, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think anyone's looking at Marner saying he's terrible at hockey. Has he been the Mitch Marner that we know he can be? Absolutely not. Nope. But I think this this we saw glimpses of Marner tonight, though. Like I think you know the the old Mitch Marner did show through. Uh, you know, on a couple of occasions tonight. I thought that he was pretty good. And obviously, you know, him, like you said, being assertive, shooting on net, and then, you know, having that uh, go into the back of the net, hopefully that does spark the confidence needed. Because when Marner is confident, like this dude's an all, literally an NHL, like he's an all-star. He's an all-NHL winger, two-time all-NHL winger. Um, He's truly like a top 15 talent when he's playing at his heights, when he's confident. And hopefully a game like tonight where you kind of started to see some things in his game start to 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 go his way. Um, you know, what what I really liked, and we talked about talked about this going into the matchup on yesterday's podcast was we wanted to see that line have a couple of you know puck recoveries uh in the offensive end, right? Like not just the one and dones, go in there, get the puck, get it back, and then have a couple of opportunities. And we saw that happen like in that wave of five six minutes where the Leafs were dominating we saw even like Callie Earncrock who was pretty good tonight I thought who was kind of you know buzzing around had a, a really nice take to the net once and then a couple of times saw him going in into the corner and had a strong four check to allow those recoveries and keep possession alive for that line so I thought that they were they were pretty good again they were mostly dominant in that one little stretch where they scored a couple of goals but um you know, it's nice to see, and it's a positive thing to take away from tonight's game, was that that top line uh, was able to get some offense at five on five. Yeah, that was that was it right there, right? You know, we know this team can be dangerous on the power play, but they if you're going to win games against a team like Boston, you have to do it at five on five. Yeah, right? Dude, Boston's, power, Boston's penalty kill, 97% coming into tonight, and... It, it it got better. <laughs> it yeah. got better after tonight. They didn't allow a, a penalty, a power play goal. So unbelievable. Uh, the start that the Bruins are on, like 9-0-1. Who would have thought that um, after the losses that they suffered this offseason with Bergeron and Krejci deciding to, to hang up the skates? And then uh, obviously you get a couple injuries to the blue line coupled with the suspension to, uh, to Charlie McAvoy. Yet yeah, they're still able to put together a pretty good – defensive effort collectively next man up mentality and you know they they squeak out a, a three two win um you know on on home ice i will say like I, I i thought that Ilya samsonov had his best night uh best game of the night i thought he was pretty solid stopped 38 of 40 pucks had a 950 save percentage a 2.3 goal saved above expected he faced 22 high danger chances tonight which means the Leafs gave up 22 high danger chances tonight, which is just too many to give up. Um, and good, luckily, Ilya Samsonov was brought his A game like that. The, again, we talk about seeing glimpses of of Marner looking like his last year self. Tonight, we saw Samsonov kind of dial it back to last season. He looked just like the number one starter that he proved to be last year tonight, gave this team a chance to win the game, kept it to two goals through 65 minutes of play, allowed maybe a weak one in the in the shootout, but whatever. When you keep the Bruins to under two goals through 65 minutes, you should be able to win that game. That's that's on the lease for not getting that last goal for him. Yeah, no, it's about, like those are the sort of performances you're just, you're going to look back on and be like, man, like Samsonov gave you such a good chance, we blew it, right? Yeah, yeah. And what I liked too was, you know, David Pasternak was flying around on the ice. Yeah, he had the one crossbar, mm-hmm. but other than that, like Samsonov had his number. Like, yeah. And I, I think importantly, so like Samsonov needed that that effort, that performance mentally for himself. I think, right? Because all we've been talking about is Joseph Wall. You know, maybe Joseph Wall should get the start, right? Joseph Wall should be running with things a little bit. I think Samsonov needed this, and I can see why Sheldon Keefe wanted to keep both goaltenders going. I wasn't too, you know, I wasn't like, ah, you know, I could see that. I'm like, I wasn't in agreement and totally with that principle. I feel like you got to go with the guy that gives you the best chance to win. Mm-hmm. But Samsonov tonight gave you a really good chance to win. So he, he, I think he rewarded the head coach's trust in him for tonight. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. So, 
you know, as we go through the good, the bad, and the ugly, I think that, that those were the goods that we saw, right? Samsonov and then the 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 top line getting some uh, production at five on five. But there was plenty bad and certainly some ugly involved in tonight's game. Uh, and we'll go through all of those things and discuss the Timothy Lilligren injury and uh, give you an update on that. So we'll do all that and more coming up on the other side. But before we get into all that, let me tell you guys about one of today's show sponsors. It's Parkview Advantage. As a business owner, you realize that there are times when receivables might fall behind, but that doesn't mean that you need to fall behind on vendor payments, payroll, or rent. For more than 25 years, Parkview Advance has helped businesses secure working capital from 5000 to $1.5 million. Parkview Advance can improve your working capital in as little as 24 hours. It's a much easier process than you might imagine. We invite the many entrepreneurs that are locked on NHL fans to learn more by calling us at 203-675-0071 or go to parkviewadvance.com. If your business needs working capital, call Parkview Advance today. Parkview Advance. Helping businesses with their working capital, go to parkviewadvance.com. Today's show is also brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fancy team, do you ever wish you could do the same with your business team? If you're building a roster to win the league, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. We can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's different tools like instant match assessments and virtual interviews. Hate waiting. Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Candidates you invite to apply through instant match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. With instant match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed, match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows that when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Indeed knows that finding people with the right skills makes all the difference when you're hiring a team of one. Visit indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That is indeed.com slash locked on. Need to hire, you need indeed. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease Podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you. We are your hosts here on the Locked On Leaf Show. We do provide you with new daily content every weekday, Monday through Friday. Uh, so you can find the podcast wherever you download your podcast from. You can also find us up on YouTube, Locked On Leafs. Hit subscribe. Also hit the little notification bell so you know exactly when we are dropping new content. Uh, for today's show, we're reacting to the Maple Leafs 3-2 to two shootout loss to the Boston Bruins. We were a little, we were more glowing than I thought we would be in that first segment there, to be honest with you. But yeah. there were some good things that we liked uh, in the game. So we, we kind of started with the good, the bad, the ugly already by going over a couple. But is there anything else that you wanted to mention that you liked about tonight's game before we get more into the bad and the ugly? Well, I mean, other than Samsonov, it was maybe Matthews and Marner getting on the score sheet, showing a little bit of chemistry again. Right, right. But other than that, it wasn't a whole lot I really liked in this game. I'll say this, uh, which will kind of coincide with uh, some of the some of the bad and ugly that we saw tonight. But uh, we did see some line juggling a little yeah. bit here in tonight's game. Tyler Bertuzzi ended up getting demoted down to the fourth line. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But with that line juggling, we saw Matthew Nyes kind of come up and play with Tavares and Nylander. So they had four minutes and 52 seconds of ice time tonight together. In those four minutes, they outshot Boston uh, five to nothing and had a 91% expected goals for rating with uh, a couple of high danger chances. So, you know, that might be something that we can look forward to uh, as we head into the weekend. Maybe that'll be a line that, uh, you know, the, the Leafs look to continue with. So I'll say that, you know, that looked pretty good in that short little time that they had together. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll give some credit where credit is due on that little line juggling uh, by Sheldon Keefe. I'll, also, said, add, I'll also add, I'll give them credit for finding a way to get a point when you're down five to five defensemen. 
and you had to rally mm-hmm. to get the that one point being down to nothing yeah absolutely which yeah timothy lilligren um the update there is is not pleasant it's not good uh sounds as though he will be uh uh, it's not short term is basically how sheldon keith put it and look this this comes up in the good the bad the ugly here um so why don't we just get right to it now now that we're on that that conversation for me it was it, it was really the ugly though of the game was the 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 whole play itself right like can opener from Brad Marshawn no penalty on the play which I really don't understand how that's not a tripping call uh but we I digress um but yeah really bad spot to be doing something like that uh for Marshawn on Lilligren and he goes hard into the boards and it looks like kind of crunches his foot not sure what the injury is of course we're told lower body so whether it's ankle foot knee whatever it might be that got jammed up along the boards it doesn't sound like he's going to be uh he's going to be back with the team anytime soon looks like a longer term injury which is not good news for the maple leafs no it's already a banged up blue line you know and the, and it's the right side <laughs> like you don't. Yeah. I don't have a preference really of losing a defenseman, but if I would rather not lose someone on the right side, does this mean that we're going to see more of John Klingberg, Dave? Well, you're not going to see less of him. No, no, we're not. I'll give John Klingberg credit for one thing: was there was a play with Marshawn in the Leafs end where he was all like they were kind of going at it a little bit, and he just shoves them into the boards, which yeah. I, I got a little kick out of that. But yeah, no. Seeing more John Klingberg, uh, not 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 gonna be uh, appetizing. That's for sure. No, and like I wonder if if this maybe motivates the Leafs to make a move here because I, I think we're now at like the ten game mark in the year. I think you can finally understand. Okay, what's what's going on with this team? What are they? What are the deficiencies? What do we need to work on? And like you're not completely done evaluating. They do say that American Thanksgiving is kind of that time where you have enough of a sample size to really know. So maybe there's still a couple more weeks before you have to make any, any, you know, rash decisions. But that being said so far, uh, the blue line has really struggled. And, and again, it was another instance where they struggled tonight. Like they gave up 22 high danger chances. And if you look at the heat, Matt, Dave, uh, I mean, the, the, the goal mouth right in front of Sansonoff beat red, beat red tonight. And, and that's where both of the goals came from as well. So, you know, defensively, they really have not been it at all this season. Um, I'm just going to see where exactly for Samsonov average shot distance. It had to have been within 30 feet of the net, I would imagine. Um, let me see here. Yeah, average shot distance, 27 feet, which doesn't seem it, it seems like it should be way more than that or way less than that, to be honest. Average goal distance, though, was uh, 10 and a half feet from the net. So they weren't able to keep the net clear and and you know allowed a lot of Bruins to get inside on them and uh <laughs> that's just you know that this this is not a big blue line we knew that this was the case going into the year but I think we're getting to a point where it's like you know this team might need to make a move and do something to improve that blue line uh because what's going on right now should not be acceptable no it shouldn't be you're getting outworked in front of your own goal every game every right. game like the how many guys were kind of standing still in their own end too while the Bruins were just you know humming around gaining momentum like you can't be stand, you can't be caught standing still in your own end right it just leads to bad things happening and I can't I understand mm-hmm. you can't just go around chasing plays but you gotta do you gotta be active in your own end. And that's 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 the tough part, you know. And yeah, you don't always have to be the biggest guy on the ice. You gotta be way more competitive than what we saw from a lot of these guys in front of their net and in their own end tonight. Yeah, for sure. The problem is they don't really have those guys, you know, like no. unfortunately, they don't they don't have those those players. And like that's what we always are like that's what we're waiting for, I guess, when it comes to Brad Living putting his stamp on this team is when is he going to beef up that blue line? And you know, he wants to do it. You know, he wants to, I don't know if he's waiting for Calgary to finally say, all right, we're done. We're going to fold up shop. 
year UFA. Like, like they've got Hannafin, they've got Tanev, they've got Zadorov. Like, there's some actual tangible pieces that I think could work in this Leafs lineup that, you know, I would think that Tree Living, who once brought all three of those players to Calgary, might want to bring back, you know, reunite him with them here in Toronto. So perhaps the injury could spurn a, a move and force Tree Living to make a move sooner rather than later. Again, I don't know who that player is, but perhaps, you know, with Lilligren being out long term, uh, McCabe expected to come back next week. But like, again, McCabe's on the left side. I think they need some help on the right side and they just need help with some size overall. So I, I, mm-hmm. I'll be curious to see if if uh, you know trade action or at least trade calls pick up for the for the 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 Maple Leafs here with with this injury. Yeah, and and look, this is not a reaction to one game. I think that's something people need to understand that this is something that's been brewing. Te- you, you just said it, ten games, right? Yeah, I don't. I know it's an eighty-two game season, but. 10 games, you get an idea of how teams want to formulate their identity a little bit here. Even 20 games, I think, is kind of enough of a sample size to really know. You know, and it's not it's not like we're seeing things improving drastically, right? The no. goaltender again had to do the goaltender again had to play hero to keep yeah. give this team a chance. We've seen that far too often. And I understand that there's deficiencies with this defense, but they should be doing a lot better than this. Right. I, I'm I'm curious though, we didn't really talk about it. We'll we'll get into we'll take a break in a sec and get into Tyler Bertuzzi and kind of what happened with him being demoted to the fourth line and get your thoughts on that. But when it came to this play against uh against Lilligren mm-hmm. with Brad Marchand, um, what did you make of the lack of response afterward? Well that I mean, yeah, first the no penalty call, I was like, of course. Just typical West Macaulay in a way. Um <laughs> But ah, yeah, it's no response. So the two part that I have here is one, I'm like, I'm wondering, do guys not want to retaliate and get a penalty themselves to put the Leafs down? Is that one reason? Or like, it's Brad Marchand. It's this is not, you know, Milan Lucic doing this. I understand, you know, you, not, the Leafs don't have, have, you know, Ryan Reeves is on the bench. Tyler Bertuzzi's on the bench somebody's got to say somebody's got you don't even need to get in a fight with Brian Marshall you need to get into his face and say you're not doing that again what are you doing you know that was you know that was a blatant attempt but here's the thing Dave. here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing and then he's gonna look at you in the face and say what are you gonna do about it yeah so if you're not willing to drop the mitts and you're not willing to take that penalty and you're not willing to show him what you're willing to do mm-hmm. about it, then what's words, man? Like, ultimately, like, I, you need to show action. Unfor- it may come back to bite you, but in the long run, I think the Leafs need to, at some point, do that, right? Like, it's like when the manager in baseball gets ejected. Sometimes he feels, even if he doesn't believe that, you know, the balls and strikes mm-hmm. are that unfair, sometimes he needs to go out there and just give it to the umpire to rally his guys and he takes that bullet for the team and ends up taking it, right? In basketball, all the time, you take a foul uh, purposely and send someone to the line because you just, you know, hey, you're not getting it that easy. Sometimes it works, you know, and, and that's somewhat where that was a situation where you would like to see some sort of response. You, you saw Ryan Reeves beacon at him on, on the, the bench, but, What's Reeves going to do? What I didn't like is, and they showed this on the broadcast actually, and 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 you know, good for for Kipper for for pointing it out. No one else was was like just deadpan. Everyone was just staring, watching Reeves chirp, and no one else seemed to have any any care in the world for what had just happened. He got Tyler Bertuzzi laughing in the corner, just giggling to himself, like, <laughs> "Oh, Brad." Oh, my good old friend Brad just sitting there, just chirping away. He doesn't mean anything. He's full of BS. <laughs> like, dude, he just injured your teammate for potentially long term. What the hell are you laughing about? That irked me, man. And I wonder, I wonder if that had anything to do with him also getting the getting the bench and sitting on the pine tonight. I wonder if that had anything to do with it. I was a little surprised too. Giordano was on the ice, and we know yeah. that Giordano's like first to dive in. Anytime a teammate's, you know, anything he suspect is wrong. I don't know if maybe he just didn't see the play because he's covering in his own 
right zone there i was a little surprised he didn't go into Lilligren's defense there because that's usually what Giordano does but yeah no I mean like you the fact that Reeves is the only one really barking and I, I didn't like the Bertuzzi laughing I, I understand the guy is quirky he's not exactly he's a little off at times but yeah you need you need to have everyone coming together and being like you know what we're pissed like our guy yeah. just got injured. We're down to five defensemen again. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The third time, man. Like and that was early in the game. Like it's the third time in the last, what, four or five games that they've, they've had to, you know, have their defensemen pick up the slack because they've, they've, you know, had dudes go out with injury. Like it's, it's starting to eventually it's going to weigh on this blue line and uh, you know, make, make the other team pay for, for that happening. I don't know. Uh, speaking of Tyler Bertuzzi, he was demoted to the fourth line throughout this game. Some scathing comments from Coach Sheldon Keefe afterward as well. We will share those comments with you uh, after I tell you guys about one of our show sponsors, uh, and it is our friends over at Better Help. Uh, this time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it, but adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNHL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, help dot com slash locked on nhl welcome back into the locked on at least podcast i'm mike DeStefano with dave morissuti we're reacting to a maple leafs three to two loss to the boston bruins in a shootout and uh well let's react to tyler bertuzzi too former boston bruin going back into his old house at td garden uh ends up getting demoted to the fourth line by sheldon keith just 11 minutes and 32 seconds of ice time tonight. And in that uh, short amount of ice time, just a 22% expected goals out of Bertuzzi. Um, what'd you make of this move? Well, I mean, it's sending a message, right? Like one of the few guys that, you know, brought in, I have, we're all really excited about because he was going to bring something different to this lineup. Yeah. And we haven't seen it. And I why understand. Don't think, it's a, why don't you think it's worked though? Like it, it, like why hasn't this worked? Where where does he belong? Like he it, he's tried with Matthews and Marner. He tried with Willie and and with Tavares, and he just hasn't been able to stick anywhere. I uh, like. I, I'm just. I'm the thing. I'm curious about here is, you know, what are the expectations for him? Uh, you know, I think this is a different role than what he's been accustomed to, right? I think it, at times. He's not seen as like the third guy on the line. Sometimes he's seen as more of the secondary option, more of the offensive guy, right? He's the one that's going to be receiving the passes and putting you know shots on goal. But at the same time, he was brought in to be that, you know, bit of a pain in the rear to play against. And he hasn't brought that, right? I think that's the part of his game that we're missing here. He's not really bringing, you know, the aggressiveness right that you want to see in his game i also wondered you know i I know he had the a bit of a an injury or whatever it was that kind of hampered him a little bit for a few games but it seems like the coach is uh he's starting to lose patience well so coach sheldon keith had some pretty scathing words uh, about tyler bertuzzi and this is what he had to say after the game uh, about the demotion, Keith said, quote, he just needs to simplify his game. Today we had a very simple plan, and he failed to execute that. So other guys had to take his place. Ugh. That's 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 pretty scathing for uh, for a coach to say about, you know, a guy who's making, what, five and a half million bucks? Career, you know, a contract year. There's a lot riding on this year. He took a gamble for the one-year deal on Toronto. Yeah. 
it's not something you want to see right like this is this is this is the sort of thing that the media is going to be all over right with Bertuzzi mm. the next time they get a chance to talk to him and things like that like I I don't mind Sheldon like you know I would like Sheldon Keith to call out players when they're not playing to the expectation placed on them all of the players too by the way that that's where I was going to go at here. Like <laughs> Bertuzzi's not the only guy that's playing below expectation. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm hoping that, you know, Sheldon Keefe is going to be fair with other guys in this sort of situation too, right? That are not playing are not, not following the coach's direction. Why, I know why, you, got, why you got to call out Ryan Reeves again. Why, why, why we got to bring up Ryan Reeves again? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You know who I really like tonight? I we should give him a shout out. Noah Gregor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Noah Gregor, like he just he's he is what he is. But yeah. that's that's all you need. Like, like Sheldon said, we just we had a simple game plan tonight. Noah Gregor plays a very simple, straight line yeah. type of game. That's well, that's kind of what you need here, right? Go to the net, take the puck, go to the net. That's pretty simple. Right. So we saw a couple guys do that tonight. Yarn Croc, I thought, did that. He had a good game. So there were some dudes who did, you know, you could tell execute the way that they needed to. Matthew Nyes and 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 you know, I thought Nylander had himself another good game. Uh, but a couple of dudes, namely all of the guys who were signed to, you know, free agent tickets early on in free agency, like none of those dudes are really doing a whole lot so far, 10 games into the season. And uh, it's 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 not a good look for Brad Trilliving. I'll say that. So maybe that also it's like, hey, your your free agency, you know, your free agent pickups aren't doing anything. You might want to make a trade to to bring someone in and rectify some of those uh, some of those um, you know bad signings that you made. The good thing is like these guys are one year deals, right? Like Bertuzzi, Klingberg, yeah. one year deals. You probably could ship one of them out there, uh, you know, to another team and and just to get the cap off the books and, and figure it out. But um, at least it's not like Calgary and Huber though. Right. Although, yeah. That's a long deal. Although who gets long deal. To that deal. <laughs> that would be Brad Trilliving. Yeah. That would be Brad T. Yeah. You're not wrong. Not wrong about that one. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm curious though. Like they're going to be at home against Buffalo on, uh, on Saturday. Like, where do we see Tyler Bertuzzi in the lineup? Do you expect to see him back in the top six? Was this just a message for the game? Or do you think maybe legitimately, like Sheldon Keefe looks at, you know, the lineup card and says, I kind of like nice with those guys. Yarncroft looked pretty good up in the top, you know, on the top line as well. Maybe Bertuzzi does have a game or two in the bottom six to work his way, motivate him maybe to get back into the top six. I think so. I That's what I would do is I would say, you know what? These guys earn the ice time. We're going to give them the ice time. And if you want to get that ice time back, you're going to have to work at it. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting. Definitely something to watch for on uh, on Saturday evening when they take on Buffalo. We'll probably talk a little bit more about that tomorrow um, when, uh, when we preview that game. Really quickly, uh, I don't know if you saw this yesterday, but it was announced that Austin Matthews uh, joined Prime Energy Drink. Uh, it's Logan Paul and KSI's energy drink company um i'm curious as to what they're paying him to be an ambassador like basically canada's ambassador like he's the biggest athlete who signed with them in canada they've got a bunch of different athletes around the world but like this is this is the benefit of being a maple leaf right as opposed to being you know anywhere else like if if he was in arizona or if he was in uh, la or if he was in i don't know throw me a team san jose Who's getting dummied eight nothing by the way by Vancouver right now? Uh, <laughs> if he was if he was there, this opportunity doesn't come. This comes because he's a Toronto Maple Leaf, and it's one of the benefits of being, you know, a member of the largest, uh, a team in the largest market, right? And and he has influence within Canada, right, as a country in Canada's biggest city in Toronto. Keep that in mind, Willie. Keep that in mind when you are negotiating a contract. Just know that there's other ways to get that extra million dollars that you're hoping to get in, in AAV. So maybe instead of holding out for you know 10.5, take that 9.5 and then just make your million bucks elsewhere 
with you know partnership deals like this. Like who's he with? Is he with Sonnet? Is that that one commercial that we see all the time? That's Sonnet Insurance. Yeah, Sonnet Insurance is one. There was the pasta one too, right? Isn't that the? I think that's the Sonnet one. Is that part of it? It's like okay. him, Dougie Gilmore, and like right. yeah, and then uh, like those come around in Toronto because people, you know, because you're a Maple Leaf. Right. I don't know if that happens in San Jose for Sharks, or I don't know if that happens, you know, in New Jersey with the Devils. Like for as good as Jack Hughes is, is there massive sponsorship deals available to him? I'm I don't know. Like I don't think nearly as much as what you know Austin Matthews is getting with Prime Energy being the face of Prime for Canada for Toronto. So keep that in mind, Willie. When uh, when when you're thinking of a contract this off season, how much? extra money can i make just by wearing a maple leafs jersey for the next eight years how much money can i make off the ice and is that worth it just i'll say little... two things about that one prime I, and people are wondering why is awesome Matthews doing this prime energy you want to know who they are the energy official energy drink of the ufc fc barcelona mm -hmm. pretty popular club oh and also arsenal they got they got some money to throw around here, and uh, I think he also like Matthews. We know he has the betting one. He has RBC. This guy is probably going to be making more, almost close. To, well, I don't know if he'll make more than his salary. I don't know how much the deals are paying him. Yeah, he's going to make close to more or roughly what he's making in his salary just by potentially. Sponsoring. Yeah, potentially, potentially he could. So. Um... Yeah, so that's that. That was kind of an interesting thing that came out a couple of days ago that we we forgot to bring up on the show. But I think where the conversation kind of gets interesting, you know, from a least perspective, is you know these are the opportunities, the benefits of being a Maple Leaf that you don't get in other markets. So that's that's you know a reason to take a little bit of a haircut or a discount is because you can make up that money in other ways. You know, you you can off the ice. So yeah, it's something to keep in mind going forward. All right, buddy. Good show. Uh, but that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms. I receive daily Leafs content for myself on X at uh, Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morris Sudi and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Go ahead, smash that like button here on YouTube. Uh, leave a comment down below. Your thoughts on uh, the Tyler Bertuzzi situation. I want to hear what you guys think about that and is it time to make a trade let me know down below as well we'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow we'll tee up the leafs and sabers first game of the year coming up on saturday so we'll tee that up for you on tomorrow's show but until then keep a lot right here on locked on leafs